Amidst many live-action Disney remakes, The Little Mermaid has to be one of the most highly anticipated. Is that even possible? Luckily, it's almost upon us, and if you're anything like us, it's got you thinking about the OG version that we know and love. And while many of us feel like we know the Disney classic like the back of our hand, there's plenty of behind-the-scenes drama that we're hearing about for the first time. Did you know that one sequence took over a year to make? What about the fact that Ariel was nearly a blonde? Or that the movie's lyricist almost stormed out and quit the movie? Yep, there's all that and more. Number 1. It's kind of hard to imagine, but part of your world almost wasn't a part of our world. Part of your world is Ariel's signature song, and it's one of the most famous Disney princess songs of all time. Part of that world. Yet it almost never happened at all. Disney Studios chairman Jeffrey Katzenberg apparently wanted to cut the song from the movie. His reasoning was actually a surprisingly solid one. During a test screening for the film before the animation was fully realized, children actually didn't like the ballad, and folks at Disney worried that the scene would cause kids to get bored and lose interest in the movie. Luckily, lyricist Howard Ashman had more than enough faith in the song for the whole team. Ashman wrote the lyrics for the Little Mermaid soundtrack alongside music written by composer Alan Menken. When he heard that part of your world was on the chopping block, he allegedly threatened to leave the project if the song was cut, arguing that without it, audiences wouldn't fall in love with Ariel and the movie would lose its heart. Luckily, his protest worked and unarguably changed the course of Disney history. Number 2. And there were other parts of The Little Mermaid that changed the course of Disney history and weren't even in the script. We're talking about some now iconic ad-libbing courtesy of the voice of Sebastian, actor Samuel E. Wright. I mustn't overreact. After Wright had finished recording his lines for Sebastian, the actor was asked to attend one last three-hour recording session that was nothing but ad-libbing. This may be an unorthodox move, as well as an intimidating ask for many actors. Yet Wright rose to the occasion. He gave us a particularly memorable line about teenagers. Teenagers. <laughs> they think they know everything. Now, we may not be as good at ad-libbing as Samuel E. Wright, but we are pretty good at making plenty of videos about your favorite animated content. So why not like and follow the things animated for more? Number 3. Ursula's appearance may be iconic now, but it actually changed quite a bit before reaching its final form. We know her as a kind of half-human, half-octopus, but at various points before, she was actually part manta ray, mollusk, and even scorpion fish. We think her octopus-esque appearance was the right choice. But some may wonder, is she even an octopus at all? Number 4. The answer is no. And the reason why is actually pretty funny. We all know that an octopus has eight tentacles, but Ursula actually only has six. Why? Well, those two extra tentacles would have been over budget. Decreasing her tentacles from eight to six sped up the animation process and consequently saved Disney some coin. So, realistically, rather than half woman, half octopus, Ursula is actually a representation of a Sakailia, which is a woman from the waist up and a tentacled creature from the waist down. Number five. Clearly, the creation of Ursula borrowed a bit from the Sakailia, but she also had some divine inspirations. A popular drag queen by the name of Divine was part of what inspired how Ursula looked as well as her mannerisms. And you can tell just to look at these two side by side that they definitely had a similar makeup routine, which, of course, was no accident on the animator's part. Number 6. In addition to all the inspiration for her look, Ursula originally had a kind of fishy family tree. So fishy, in fact, that her own brother was a merman. That merman was King Triton. Yes, in the original script, Ursula was Ariel's aunt. But that little tidbit was cut from the movie, and we're glad it was, because that changes the story quite a bit. Number 7. Another thing that would have changed the story? If Ursula wasn't evil. Sure, Ursula's evilness seems pretty integral to The Little Mermaid, but in the original story, Ursula's counterpart, the Sea Witch, wasn't quite as bad as Ursula. So Disney tweaked a few things to make Ursula a better Disney villain. Number 8. Ursula's evil nature wasn't all that Disney tweaked from the original fairy tale. The original Hans Christian Andersen story was thought of as too depressing, since The Little Mermaid actually met her maker at the end of that version. Thank goodness that Disney is so good at Disney-fying its stories. Losing Ariel would have been downright sad. Number 9. It may have been easy for Disney to make The Little Mermaid Disney-appropriate, but that certainly doesn't mean that this was an easy movie to make. 400 technicians and artists worked for three years to make the movie. They used 1,100 backgrounds, almost 150,000 painted cells, and a whopping 1,000 different colors to make this world come to life. Number 10. It's easy to imagine all the scenes in this movie that contributed to all of that labor, but one sequence in particular caused the creators a lot of strife. 
The storm sequence in which Ariel finds and saves Prince Eric took 10 people more than a year to animate. Animator and co-director Ron Clemens knows firsthand just how long a process animation is. According to him, this movie used the most effects of any Disney film since Fantasia. Number 11. For just a little insight into what it really means to animate something of this magnitude, just take a look at the bubbles. The Little Mermaid features millions of bubbles, and every one was drawn by hand. That means that out of the millions, no two bubbles are exactly alike. Number 12. This traditional animation style used hand inked and painted cells. While this animation is certainly impressive, it was actually the last time Disney used it for a full length film. Number 13. So it's safe to say that this movie made history in more ways than one, but that doesn't mean that Disney always had faith in it. Ron Clements' original pitch was rejected since Disney was already making a sequel to their mermaid movie Splash, and they felt they'd already had their fill of mermaids. Luckily, after reading the treatment, they changed their tune. And the rest is history. Number 14. Believe it or not, the rom-com Splash had more of an impact on The Little Mermaid than just the delay. Ariel was originally a blonde, if you can imagine it, but they landed on her iconic red hair for a few reasons. First, it worked well with the undersea palette of blues and greens. They thought it fit Ariel's fiery personality, and it set her apart from Daryl Hannah's character in Splash. Number 15. Just as iconic as Ariel's red hair is her voice, and that's courtesy of Jodie Benson. What do you call him? Oh, feet. <laughs> Benson knew Howard Ashman since she worked with him on his Broadway musical Smile. She sent in an audition tape for the role of Ariel, but the tapes were all unmarked so that the creators had no choice but to listen to nothing but the voices. Clearly, Benson was meant to be Ariel. Number 16, but that doesn't mean that she had the perfect Disney princess voice. After her success as Ariel, Disney considered her to voice Belle in Beauty and the Beast, but ultimately they opted for Paige O'Hara, whose voice was a bit deeper and more mature. Oh, thank you so much. They sure know how to cast their princesses perfectly. Oh, that was good. <laughs> Number 17. But besides everything we know and love about The Little Mermaid, it actually made a big impact on Disney. Before The Little Mermaid, Disney had undergone a stretch of serious box office struggles. The Little Mermaid was such a success that it ushered in what's now referred to as the Disney Renaissance, and effectively brought the company back to life and started a very important time in animation history. This period brought us Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, The Lion King, Hercules, and Mulan to name a few. So, what do you think about all that went into making the original Little Mermaid? Does this have you excited for the remake? Let's talk about it in the comments, and if you love videos like this one, don't forget to like and subscribe to The Things Animated for more.